Breeze and Overcast, the NFL on CBS, Rex Ryan, coach of the Jets, and the man he replaced in New York, Eric Mangini, about to duel. This game brought to you in Sony High Definition, and kickoff is next here on CBS. Presenting Subway Fresh Buff, a look at football's most buzzworthy teams. Brought to you by Subway, home of the famous $5 footlong. Subway, where winners eat. Though sidelined recently with injuries, the Eagles' Michael Vick and Deshaun Jackson made big plays in their return last week. He is looping it deep. He's got it. All the way down at the Colts' 40. Along with two picks by Asante Samuel, Philadelphia beat the Colts and is just one game out of first place. CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Cleveland Browns Stadium all set now for the Jets and the Browns and the coin flip won by the Jets. Hello friends Jim Nance along with Phil Sims and the Jets elect to kick the football away Phil. Of course they do. They want to get their defense defense on the field and they want Colt McCoy the rookie quarterback to see it see how he reacts to it. All right Colt McCoy for the first time will go against an opposing quarterback that has not won a Super Bowl his first three opponents. We're Roethlisberger, Breeze, and Brady. And he comes out of it two and one. So the Jets are going to be delivering the football down to Josh Cribbs. You know how dangerous he is. He's run eight kicks back in his career, an all-time NFL record. Although this year pretty stagnant. His number's not up to norm. Nick Folk to kick it for the Jets. And it's a liner that's going to be on a couple of hops into the arms. Well, mishandled for a moment. Cribbs. Picks it up with one hand, and he's surrounded in a hurry. So that's a tough beginning for McCoy from about the 13-yard line. Here comes Colt McCoy. He has not thrown an interception in the last two games. That first start at Pittsburgh, his two picks were both deflections. Not really his fault. He's very calm, very ready for this moment. With all that experience you spoke of, Phil, at Texas. Thomas has never missed a snap in his fourth year out of Wisconsin. And Peyton Hillis last week, 184 yards against New England, the second highest rushing total in the league this year after Arian Foster of the Houston Texans week one against Indianapolis. So we'll start from the 14 in a little rollout throw incomplete in the area of Chancey Stuckey. Now that Jet defense, Rex Ryan told us this should be a great game for the likes of Bart Scott and David Harris. Martin Scott called it when he met with us this week a battle of wills today expecting to see so much of Hillis and Rodney Poole along with Edwards co-captain here today Poole played his first five years in the league with the Cleveland Browns. So a second down and ten. And now they'll go to Hillis. Little hurdle high step and it takes both Leonard and Poole to knock him down at the 23rd and four coming up. Let's get a little Phil Sims philosophy. Well, we saw Peyton Hillis to run him. What does it do to linebackers? Look how they freeze, and it allows Ben Watson to get down the field. How's that for a throwing lane for a young quarterback? So you can say what all you want. We just saw it on that first play. Peyton Hillis, just a different style runner than we usually see in the NFL. This guy runs at you, able to go outside, but has tremendous power once contact is made. Ribs is in the game. He's lined up on the left side. They shift Hillis out of the backfield. Straight drop from McCoy. He throws, and they pick up the first down with Hillis. So they get out of the jam, and they get it out across the 25 with the six-yard completion. Calvin Pace bumps him out. First down, Browns. Power runner, Peyton Hillis. Then they get him outside and get him matched up against Calvin Pace. And when you watch this Cleveland offense, Colt McCoy, good job getting time. But when you watch this offense, Jim, they need all three plays a lot of times just to get 10 yards. And that was just a good example. You see them do what they just did a lot. 
So from the 26, new set of downs, and they go Hillis. Goes up the middle into the arms of Buoha and Bart Scott. We met with Peyton Hillis, of course, traded back in March from the Denver Broncos, and when he got that first call from Eric Mangini, Mangini said to him, this is going to be the land of opportunity for you here in Cleveland. You could be a thousand yard rusher here. Yeah, that's right. You know, come show us that you got the talent, what we think you do, and you earn the carries. And that's what he's done, Jim. He's come here, earned the carries. Not only that, he has shown everybody once again, he has tremendous hands. They used him in the passing game, too. Looks like the trade steal of the, of the year in the NFL. Is on second down before he throws it over the head. There is a flag thrown on Eric Smith. The pass was in the direction of Benjamin Watson. Hillis picked up a, a blitzing Brodney pool that allowed McCoy to at least unleash the Prior pass. Prior to the pass, illegal contact. Illegal contact. Defense number 33. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. Terry McCauley, the referee, confirming the infraction on Eric Smith. Down the field, what happens is it's the double move that time by Ben Watson, and that's what the Cleveland Browns want to do. They want to use their running back, running backs, tight ends, the inside receivers to try to make those moves, get down the field, and get those big plays. So another first down at the 34. Set up screen with Watson. Watson takes it into Jet territory at the 47, a gain of 19. Just a tremendous job, the Jets in man-to-man -man coverage, trying to take advantage, come after the young quarterback. And what happens? Once the tight end, Watson blocks, they fall into the trap. We talked about it in the open. That's what you want to do. Invite him to blitz. Yeah, go on and get in there and look at the lineman out in front, Womack. He just outran Womack, and Womack yeah. couldn't keep up with him. Watson takes it to the Jet 47. Take advantage of a defense that's starting out, as usual, very aggressive. A pitcher, Hillis, he's got room. Hillis down to the 33, and that was Jim Leonard who made a saving tackle, and Joe Thomas who helped seal that left side for 15. Joe Thomas, left tackle, 73, he's all in one. Comes around the outside. Derek Smith, yeah, he just runs away from him. I don't blame him. He's a tremendous pass blocker, very good in the run. And the, the one unit on this Cleveland team, to me, that really stands out is the offensive line. Got some talent. Pretty, pretty mean, too, which is always a good trait for offensive line. Play action fake to Hillis, and McCoy has his target at the 20, a tumbling Robert Royal and another first down for Cleveland. Well, that's a good job by Colt McCoy. As he comes out, there's a receiver right in front that's going to get four or five yards. Nope, he waits, sees Royal coming across the field, and we've already seen it a couple times here today. The fact that you're worried about the run. The Browns doing an excellent job of mixing it up. The now, Jets defense thinking run, they're getting beat by the pass. Got three tight ends in on first down in the red zone now at the 19. McCoy flips it incomplete in and out of the hands of Lawrence Vickers, the fullback. Now this is a team that in these wins over the Saints and against the Patriots got off the big starts in the first halves of those games but they have not had an opening drive touchdown in their last nine games going back to last season a season in which they closed fast they won their last four after a 1 and 11 start well, I think it's when he turned around I think all the players realized all the hard work under Eric Mangini learn to work hard first then you compete then you win games they started believing in him and we're really unfortunate not to win some of the early season games this year. Boy, they had some fourth quarter leads. They let get away. Now it's Hillis on second and ten. The battering ram. He was stacked up at the line of scrimmage and was able to power ahead for a couple. Third and eight on the way. You know, we say it all the time. You know, we talk about it. You hear me, Jim, and it's it's just not something that's said. It's real. When you have a running back that can run into the line of scrimmage and he gets four yards instead of getting stopped at two because he's trying to break it outside and get extra yards, it's huge to the offense. 
Keeps the situation, gives you more plays to throw the football, and especially when you have a young quarterback, just takes a lot of the burden off of him. This is the 10th play of this opening drive that began at the 14. It's a third and eight at the Jet 17. All out blitz, stop the receivers. Top of your screen. Yeah, they loaded up with three receivers to the left. McCoy gets away from Eric Smith. Rolls out, robs it over the top. Watson, no! Cannot hold on. Was overthrown by just a little bit. And they'll bring out Phil Dawson for the field goal try. It's the blitz. They get in there again this time. Eric Smith misses the tackle. When you miss, you've got to miss to the outside. You see, he missed the inside, and Colt McCoy got out the difference. Why they're playing well under him, he's doing a good job, but his movement out of the pocket is making a big difference for this Browns offense. This is a 35-yard field goal attempt. Reggie Hodges on the hold. Punt Brianne will snap it back. Dawson's made his last 11. Dawson from 35 make it 12 straight makes by the most tenured Cleveland Brown player on the roster. 3-0 Cleveland. 11-play drive for the Cleveland Browns. Results in a field goal. Officially 34 yards and a good job by Reggie Hodges. Ball was getting a little slippery there. You thought these conditions when we showed up early this morning might be really good for the quarterbacks today. Yeah, but it changed. It's gotten a little cooler, a little breezier, and dry on side. Look at this. Tries to save it, goes out of bounds. That was Joe Hayden trying to swat it back in the field to play. Boy, I tell you, the tricks, they do come I, in it, bunches from the Browns. Not they? surprised. I expected it. Kickoff out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball in place at the spot of the foul where it went out of bounds. First down. That means the Jets will have the football at the Cleveland 42. Here was the onside try. They, they got him. It's like it fooled the Cleveland Browns. They're not alert for the football, so I'm not sure everybody was on the same page. The Jets had no idea, all in retreat. If you look at it, Jim, if you watch the Brown defenders running down there, nobody looking for the football. So the Jets' first play, it's going to be Sanchez. Contact on Tomlinson, no flag. Now we talked a lot about Colt McCoy, this is his fourth start. Sanchez had his 24th birthday on Thursday. He's actually two months younger than the quarterback on the other side today. Sanchez's first 300-yard performance came last week at Detroit. Mangold, twice a Pro Bowler, coming back to his home state of Ohio. And Braylon Edwards, uh, he's been talking a lot this week, coming back to Cleveland. Not a real original thought about bring your popcorn, but he says he's going to put on a show. We'll see. And that's up the middle with Tomlinson twisting for about nine. It'll be a third and one for the Jets. Here's the Cleveland defense that has not allowed a team to score on its opening possession all season, but they give the Jets the short field to start. Vegeta coming over from the Super Bowl champion Saints. And Elam made a big strip last week in the win over the Patriots. Of course, he comes over in that trade that elevated the Jets from 17th in the first round to the fifth pick to take Sanchez. Third and one. And Tomlinson has, with ease, the first down at the 30. Running behind Matt Slauson. Excellent job, the New York Jets coming out the very first play. They go for the home run throw down the field. Browns ready for it. They have it covered. Mark Sanchez throws it away. But when they run it up inside, the Jets have so many weapons. And then Brad Smith came in the game. He fakes the reverse. It made the defense stop. But then Ian Thomas had got inside for a good run. First down at the 30. Tomlinson's had huge games in his career against Cleveland. They fake the Tomlinson. They've got an open counter. Dustin Keller. Cuts back. Gets about nine. Hey, you know what? All those things I said about the Cleveland Browns, okay, just repeat it, because you could say it about the Jets' offense. They line up. That offensive line can move it. They can run it. So these types of plays, look at Keller coming all the way across the formation, fighting his way through, still gets open. Take advantage of the fact 
that you have an excellent running team. Settles this Cleveland defense down, too. Brad Smith in here at quarterback. He takes the snap, goes straight up the middle, picks up the first. So they snap it to Smith, he picks up four. I look at these number 16s on the field today, so similar to what they can do. Cribs and Smith. Now, Brad Smith has had, I think his role just keeps getting more defined, and he gets better at it. And when he comes in, you've got to be high alert. He's either going to be the quarterback, he's going to take a reverse, he catches a screen. Works well. First down at the 17. Three receivers to the left. Sanchez going left, and there's Edwards with a catch. We're going to hear the reaction for Braylon Edwards here in Cleveland as he stopped and now with a scuffle. And a whole lot of jawing and shoving. I think an official got a little bit of that, too. And we got a Browns player down in the meantime. It's Sheldon Brown is down at the 10-yard line. We'll have an injury timeout. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. The new Windows phone. It's time for a phone to save us from our phones. And by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. What got lost in all that fracas there for a while was the fact that Sheldon Brown, the one who made the initial hit on Braylon Edwards, his helmet collided with the left shoulder of Edwards. Mm. And then everybody starts pushing, even one of the officials getting a little bit pushed out of the way by Edwards. Yeah, Sheldon Brown just took the full impact on his left shoulder. You know, I don't know, Jim. Am I right or wrong? It just seems like we have more of that pushing and shoving now than ever before. I just don't remember it being such a big part of the game. No, just it's, play. It's definitely intensified. Just, you know, play hard. Sheldon Brown's really played well for the Cleveland Browns. This is a big deal, I think. Yeah. Him going out. He's backed up by Joe Hayden, uh, the rookie they took with the seventh pick in the first round out of Florida. I thought last week, Sheldon Brown, Eric Wright against the New England Patriots, they, it was borderline outstanding. They made it difficult for Tom Brady to throw the football, no question. Jets on a very good drive, very diverse, just coming out, just showing everything. I like it when they play this way. And when you're a team that can run it and you have so much pride in your defense, when you get a lead, it magnifies what you want to be and who you are. It is going to be Hayden on Edwards at the top of your screen. And a second down and four. They'll go down at LT. And he's pushed down at the eight. It'll be third and a long one. Coleman's the one who pushed him down. The last time the Browns gave up an opening drive touchdown was last season, early last season, against the Ravens, all the way back to September 09 when McGahee scored on them. Last time they gave up a first drive touchdown. Three receivers to the left. Holmes wide left, third will call it two. Sanchez waits, waits, now throws, incomplete. They were going for Edwards. T.J. Ward, the rookie out of Oregon, tipped it away. And the Jets will have to come out and try to match the Dawson field goal. Yeah, nothing there. I'll tell you what happens. They're trying to throw it to the right flat. Oh, almost gets, that's trouble. Mark Sanchez, it's a little bit of a panic throw. Did it a lot of times in my career. Gets lucky it's not intercepted. 
but trying to throw it in the right flat to LaDainian Thomason, the linebacker for the Cleveland Browns. Saw it, disrupted it, ruined the play. 27-yard field goal try by Nick Folk, who tied it last week at the end of regulation, then won it in overtime. From 27, sneaks in that right side, matching threes on the board. Warren almost comes up with the pick. They deny Edwards. Jets with a field goal. That kick. Now, what that did, Eric Mangini, he drew first blood. But now, all special teams, high alert. They're walking out there, every special, both special teams coaches. Be alert for this. Be alert for that. Jets had not put points on the board the last three games. Of course, with that short field, the Browns fortunate that it's only a three-point net in the end and Cribs will not run this one out we'll begin the series at the 20. first quarter in cleveland three three the nfl on cbs is sponsored by chevrolet every model is backed by a 100,000 mile five-year powertrain limited warranty and by sprint the now network Back here in Cleveland, Jim Nance, Bill Sims, and, you know, Colt McCoy, decorated career at Texas. He won 45 games, winning as quarterback in NCAA history. Only college quarterback, Bill, in college annals to have at least 10 wins all four years. And as you said, you made the point, didn't expect to play this year, but a whole lot of experience in big games, of course, about be at the college level. He comes out with play action. First option shut down. He's going to take his five yards and step out. We're going to take it to New York for our first update of the day. James Brown. Hey, Jim and Phil. Vontae Davis pass interference call of 33 yards against Randy Moss. That opens up the way for Chris Johnson, his 17-yard jaunt to the pay dirt. All not at seven and all. Chris Johnson supposed to be the beneficiary of Randy Moss on that squad. Jim Nance and Phil Sims. All right, J.B., Ronnie Brown scored the touchdown for Miami in that game. Thank you for keeping us posted. Second and five here for McCoy and the Browns. Hillis. He takes a couple of jets with him, and the ball's out. Recovered by New York. He had the first down across the 30, had two jets on him. David Harris recovers. When you have this running style of Peyton Hillis's, you take contact. Look how much longer he goes with the football after contact is initiated. So the longer you go, the more people that rally around you and hit you. And that time the Jets finally knock it out. Boy, he must have felt it coming. He put two arms around it, and they still were able to pop it out. And the Jets, two possessions. Now for the game, both starting on the Cleveland side of the field. I think what the Jets are finding out on the defensive side, this offensive line is really good for the Cleveland Browns, and Peyton Hillis can deliver the mail. There's no doubt. Sean Green is in the backfield now for New York. And a flag thrown from the back judge. Play game. game. Offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. This starting with a short field is not something the Jets have been doing recently. 41 of their 43 previous drives had started on the other side of the 50, but two for two today. Well, that tells you a lot, Jim. It tells you, you know, that the, the, the defense of the Jets, it's not quite surprising people the way it did last year. And when you don't surprise them, you're not getting those turnovers. A first and 15 now from the 36. Here's Green's first handle. Ruben got to him first. And we'll go for our second update. Back to you, JB in New York. Hey, Jim and Phil. Colt capitalizing on a Cincy turnover. Carson Palmer picked off here on second and nine by Kelvin Hayden. 31 yards to pay dirt. Hayden's second pick this season. Both were scores. 10 0 Indianapolis over Cincy in the first. Jim Nance and Phil Sims. All right, of course, we saw Kelvin Hayden. No, back three and a half years ago in the Super Bowl win over Chicago. Return one for a touchdown. Off of Rex Grossman. He has one early in that game. Play action and Sanchez sidesteps the pressure and dumps it off to Richardson for no gain. Third and ten coming up, Phil. 
Well, the one thing I think the Jets want to do today when they play action pass, or when Mark Sanchez drops back, they want to get it down the field. And they have so many matchups that I think they think favors them. But the biggest one is the tight end, Dustin Keller. But the one thing the Cleveland Browns are doing, they're being aggressive at the line of scrimmage with Dustin Keller, making it tough for him to get down the field. Tomlinson returns as the running back. Need to get to the 21 for the first. Pass caught again for no gain. Maybe a yard. Dustin Keller knocked down by Patron right away. David Bowen's putting on the pressure. You've got two guys in the backfield. You think the Jets get a little confused by the blitz of the Cleveland Browns. When you keep two backs in the backfield, you're expecting blitz. Bowen's gets through. Late, rec late recognition by the Jets' offensive line. Call Sanchez to get rid of the football. Nick Folk called on again, this time from 48. Is wide right. The Browns will take over at the 38. The Hillis fumble did not lead to any points. 3-3, three, three, three minutes to go, first quarter. CBSSports.com experts are providing the award-winning advice you need to finish strong in your fantasy football league. It's all at fantasynews.cbsports.com. Rob Ryan's defense does not bend the Jets. Unable to produce anything after the turnover. The missed field goal gives the football back near the 39. It's an end around the Crips. Watson out there in front of him, and he somersaults to the Jets 47. Stopped by Cromarty. Well, you can't chase, and that's what the Jets do. Calvin Pace down the line of scrimmage. Who's outside? Nobody. And Cribs. Wow, that's dangerous. You mean too much to the football team. Don't take chances like that. But the Cleveland Browns keeping this Jets defense off balance. And I think you can see it at home. They're every bit the match for the Jets. The Jets not overpowered them or fooled them. They picked up 14. They'll go back to Hillis. DeVito has hold of him at the 43. That fumble on the last drive was the fourth loss fumble of the season by Hillis. Had one week, uh, one against Tampa. Week five against Atlanta. Look at the guys that get around him because he can carry the pile. Look how many people here. He yeah, it's up. Your point is a good one. There's a lot more of exposure for him to lose it. That, and I, I really believe this too, Jim. We've heard it from players before and coaches. I think his arms are so big that he has a hard time, too, handling the football. How can you cradle up into your bicep and do that when they're, I'm serious, when they're that large? I think it hurts in securing the football sometimes. I never had that problem. Second down and six. McCoy is walloped. He got it away in time to the 35, and that is Stuckey with the catch. Personal foul, roughing the pass. Oh, Defense number 57, illegal contact to the helmet. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the play. First down. Mark Scott is the one flagged here. And Terry McCauley threw it quick, so there must be no doubt Sean Ellis gets through. No, it's Bart Scott. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong guy. The helmet does look like it goes high. But Cole McCoy, I thought when he was at Texas, the best thing he did as a quarterback, one of the best things, he's able to stay back with his weight under pressure and throw the football. And, boy, you talk about coming in handy. It does here in the pros. Hillis is in the quarterback position. Did this at Arkansas. Yes, he did. And that's going to be a reverse. Massacre with a flag down. He is holding at the 12. offense number 40. 10 yard penalty. First down. So Hillis takes the snap and then later commits the holding penalty. I was watching Peyton Hillis to see if he got the block because I thought it had a chance to get around the outside. Well, you said it. He really, if you go back to the start of it, when this whole Wildcat thing exploded around the NFL, you could track it back to Arkansas, where he was in a backfield there with McFadden and Felix Jones, and he was the first guy ever he was in that formation. They called it the Wild Hog there in Arkansas. Then he got hurt, then he changed over to Gary McFadden, Peyton Hillis. You always have to be alert. Catches it, runs it well. 
and he was the quarterback in that situation because he throws it okay for a running back. Now facing a first and 20 off the penalty. They drop back to Watson. Smith giving chase. Watson pick up a big chunk here, and he's within a couple of the first down. Gain of 18. Well, here's what you want to do, Jim. We talked about it. Here goes Watson. He's against Eric Smith. Why go outside against two of the best corners in the NFL? How about that for a route? Make contact, get some separation, and then turn it into a foot race. The Browns, they have the idea, and they are executing it very well. Have they even thrown a pass outside against Darrell Rivas or Cromartie? I don't think so. They have one completion to Stucky as a wide receiver. Here's Harris. He's wide open. Harris is going to trot home for the touchdown. Boy, did Lawrence Vickers free him with a block. That one right there, Peyton Hillis, his ninth touchdown of the year. And he gets the reprieve from the fumble on the previous possession. Russell with the extra point. 16 seconds to go in the first quarter at Cleveland Brown Stadium. Hillis and the Browns go up 10-3 over New York. Saturday, get inside the legendary career of a larger-than-life American icon, the NFL's man in the hat, Tom Landry, presented by Courtyard. Mark it down next Saturday, 1.30 Eastern time on CBS. That was a 14-yard touchdown run by Hillis, only the second running back to rush for a score against the Jets this year. They had a couple of quarterbacks run in for touchdowns, and Hillis and the Browns, this is what they do, Phil. Hey. Uh, we've seen it in person now, and I think we've seen it right away. This is this is different. Jets haven't played somebody this physical. Kick is on Bert Smith, fields it at the five. Good kickoff. And with little room to squeeze through out of bounds at the 25. Marcus Bernard, he passed out at uh, practice. One There's no week. foul on the play. First down. And he got all the battery. They said it was just exhaustion, so he's up today. This is after the missed field goal, after the Hillis fumble, his reaction to it. They took over at their own 38, and just a few plays later. Right. Listen to the hitting. You keep saying it. Well, here's what's happening. The Browns are so physical, the Jets are putting all their work into making and sustaining the contact. Well, if you're working so hard to absorb the contact, how do you get off to make the tackle on a running back, running back like Peyton Hillis? From the 25, Sanchez brings it. Holmes has it at the 40. That was the rookie Hayden on the coverage. That's the end of the first quarter. Cleveland leads it after one, 10 to three. You're watching the NFL on CBS. There's nothing wrong with Ohio. The second quarter about to get started. Buddy Ryan sitting up in the box today with his two boys dueling down there. Rob, the defensive coordinator of the Browns, his unit on the field right now. As Rex's as New York Jets hand it off to Sean Green. For a couple of yards, you know, had some fun visiting with the coaches. Of course, you saw the playful interaction this week at the press conferences and Rex dressing up, <laughs> trying to look like his brother, and then uh, Rob having his own little take on it. Rex, what did he say? My dad's 100% behind the Jets this yeah, week. That's right, 100%. He's rooting for him. He's, he's an ex Jets coach, and he's rooting for me because I'm the head coach. But what did Rob say? Rob said, Really? He's staying at my house. I can promise you it's the other way. Sanchez going for the big ball. It's over everyone's head. Eric Wright was down there defending. San Antonio Holmes was the Jet receiver down the field. You can imagine, though, what this must mean to 
Oh, yeah, buddy. But he's very proud of his son. So I'll never forget when Rob and Rex Lyon told me he took him in a hotel room one night and taught him about his famed 46 defense. And it's like we said in the open. They both were destined to be coaches. They love it. They like the interaction with the players. And the players react very well to that. Third down for the Jets from the 42. Sanchez has Edwards, gets away from the hit. And Braylon is out of bounds at the 37. 21 on that play to Braylon Edwards. Well, it's a good job. It's man coverage. And Braylon Edwards, top of your screen, coming down underneath. And you just wait long enough until he outruns Ray Batron and gets it and gets those extra yards. We were up here watching the teams warm up. And we hear this booing and clapping and everything. We yeah. go, what is that? Well, the fans were cheering that Braylon Edwards dropped the pass during warm-ups. I mean, it was, it was wild. His first warm-up throw and attempted a catch failed, and they already were on him. That's Sean Green plowing ahead to the 30 for seven. Was Edwards the third pick by the Cleveland Browns six years ago, taken after Alex Smith and Ronnie Brown 1-2. Had that big season here, 16 touchdowns back in 07. Blew out his ACL as rookie year. But Mangini came here. He didn't really fit in with what Mangini's trying to build with a team-first attitude, and they traded him back to the Jets, or over to the Jets. They go back on the ground with Green, and that's near a first at the 27th. Now you think, well, we're seeing a little more Sean Green today so far than LaDainian Tomlinson. You know, I think there's a couple factors. It's the team they're playing, the Cleveland Browns, very big on defense, not fast, so they can hold their ground, and the surface here in Cleveland, I would not call it the fastest field in the NFL, even though today it's in excellent shape. Yeah, you checked it out. You thought all week it might be a concern. The Jets brought a bunch of different cleats to check out before the game. The best footing. Jets have a first down at the 27. Sanchez. No screen, and it's well covered. What a tackle by Gokong. He slams down LT for a loss of seven. And Sean Rogers really forced that. He was in on Sanchez. Yeah, Sean Rogers doesn't even start. Oh, it's just too quick. When you're an offensive lineman, the first thing you have to do is slow down the defensive lineman a little bit. Sanchez really fortunate he could see well enough to make this throw. But you have veteran linebackers for the Cleveland Browns. They can read blocking patterns. So screens, little trick plays, or different plays, they recognize and take them away from your offense. Brad Smith again back at quarterback. Dropped it for a moment. Now trying to run an option. Cuts back middle to the 26 before Scott Fujita brings him down. Boy, Brad Edwards. Boy, Brad Smith. How good misses it trying to get the quick read so the football doesn't get to him. Like I said, strong, excellent runner in college. Breaks the tackles and just puts the Jets in field goal range and a makeable third down now. Able to get nine out of what for a moment looked like a box play. The 16th snap in Cleveland territory. Coming here on third and eight. Got an arm on Sanchez. He's able to get away, though, to the end zone. Touchdown, New York. Jericho Cotchery was left alone. 25-yard strike, Sanchez to Cotchery. The Browns pick up people coming across. I think they want to throw it to Dustin Keller, but there's nowhere to throw it underneath. Against this Browns defense, I think the throws are down the field. They make mistakes. They've done it this year, and they made a big one that time against the Jets. Nice job. Sanchez moving, making the throw. Nice recovery by the Jets after the seven-yard loss on the little pass to LT. Smith got nine. Next play, Sanchez gets 25. That, that's seven, and the game is 10-10. Wednesday on CBS, winning this case will take a lot of patience, a little luck, and a touch of magic. Penn Jellet, Penn Gillette of Penn and Teller, guest stars on the Defenders this Wednesday. 
This kick popped up into the air down to about the 18. Mike Bell decked at the 29. 11-yard run back. Hillis with the touchdown for the Browns into the pound. Same end zone. Jets come back to Kotri, the tie to 10. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by FedEx. We understand you need a winning game plan. FedEx. Wells Fargo Advisors. And by Acura, the most innovative thinking you'll find, you'll find in an Acura. Back here in Cleveland and a good one. Jim Nance, Phil Sims. And the Browns, here's a little quarterback comparison. Sanchez and McCoy, who both were redshirted as freshmen. Back to their school days, USC and Texas, both on the sidelines for that epic Rose Bowl game, national championship game. Back in 2006. Here's Hillis. And he is upended, but picks up. We'll give him five. What happened on the Jets' touchdown defensively for the, for well, here, the Browns? Here's what happened. Cotchery goes right down the middle. But watch the defense as they watch Sanchez come up in the pocket and move, and everybody loses sight of where they're supposed to be. So the fact that the quarterback moves, made the defense stop, they reacted to him. Cotchery does a nice job. Sanchez, excellent job of keeping his eyes down the field as he's moving to throw it. A second and five. Second straight carry for Hillis. And it's Pace who brings him down. Picks up six and a first down. Watch the box. Gates, the right guard. Pulls. Boom. Vickers, the fullback outside. Boom. Down to the ground. And then Peyton Hillis. Surprisingly, when you watch him, very nimble feet. You know, I shouldn't be surprised. He's just such a big guy and can get outside and make it happen. Well, it's like what Mangini said to us on Friday. He makes you pay when you tackle him. You feel it. You wear him down as the game goes on. First down, McCoy falls at about the 46. That's a scramble of about six. We've got an update out of New York. James Brown, over to you. Jim and Phil, Bears take the lead over Minnesota on a third and 14 as Jake Cutler drills this one over the middle to tight end Greg Olson. 17-yard strike, 10 plays, 71 yards, 7-3 Chicago over Minnesota in the second. Jim and Phil. All right, thank you, JV. That Bears team kind of a hard one to figure this year. They are. They are. Everybody complaining about them and... Moaning about this and that, but the fact is they're five and three. Yep. You'd never know it. Make the mistakes, but they have one five and eight. Here's a screen to Ellis. Oh, he breaks tackles. Again, making them pay. Never got brought down. All the way to the Jets 41. Woo. He got away from both Harris and Scott, the two guys that the coaches identified this should be their kind of game. This is their type of game, and they said, I promise you. We will not get tired of hitting this guy. Well, I'm not going to say they're tired of hitting him, but they're not winning the battle. Bounced and, off both of them. And I remember when he they played the Baltimore Ravens at Cleveland Browns. Terrell Suggs didn't even know his name. Didn't They said, Hillis, he goes, I've never heard of the guy. When the game was over, he says, and, you know, in a, in a good way, he goes, I know who he is now because... Defenders are found out in this league. Tough to bring him down. Here is Thomas Blake, his first carry of the season. Just a couple of weeks ago, he was on the Patriots roster, and he has stopped for no gain. A couple things. As we said, the offensive line, the Browns, to me, the best unit on this whole team. Colt McCoy handling it very well and under basically no pressure. And it's the mixture of plays that has the Jets really just sitting there trying to react. They are not attacking. They're reacting. The Browns just dictating play when their offense is out there on the field. Sean Laval is in for the Browns at left guard. Rookie out of Arizona State. Down second and ten. That's Brooks. Good room. Tip it off at the 20. Brooks at the 10. High stepping it down to the 5. 37 yards. Just a blown assignment by the Jets. Look at it. 
Bibbs coming from your left, comes across the field. They're trying to make contact. Nobody follows. And if you're playing a zone, where's the person that's on that side of the field? Nobody there. Short crossers, again, throwing to the inside. Well, Cribs loves to leave his feet when he sees contact coming. Cribs, though, has to be helped off. 37 yards, it goes, even though it was just a short toss, the longest pass play for McCoy. And Hillis dives, he's able to get two out of it. Down to the three. So we're seeing screen plays, bootlegs by Colt McCoy, and most of all, short little routes crossing the field. That's how you attack this Jets defense. Everybody is doing the same thing against them now. And, and to me, it is what Colt McCoy does best. When he was at Texas, he moved in the pocket. He let the receivers, if they weren't open, he gave them time. They crossed the field, he hit them. He goes shotgun on second and goal from the three. Willis comes out of the backfield. They switch it over to him. And that gives back two yards. Jet saw that one coming. Mm, Ehedibo came up to make the play. I tell you what, first, it had no chance of succeeding because they were outnumbered. You could see it right away. And if they come back to it, the back side of the passing play. Look at the Jets. Thomas, Leonard, linebackers all there waiting for it. Wouldn't shock me to see that play again, see him fake that throw or throw it to his left. Now third and goal from the five. They're making the Jets play safe. McCoy looking for anything back to the end zone incomplete. Right between a pair of receivers, both Watson and Moore. Now, good coverage down the field. No pressure really on Cole McCoy again. They're using a three-man rush. He just elects to go outside. He could have stepped up. To be a 23-yard field goal in the end. Good job of passing it off. Now the Jet defenders. Jets give up that 37-yard pass play to Cribs, and they buckle down. Now hold them to a field goal. Dawson, second of the day. Good from 23. Five minutes and change to go. First half, 13-10 Browns. Tonight on 60 Minutes, the first living soldier to earn the Medal of Honor since Vietnam. Plus, could the answer to our energy problems be right under our nose? Find out tonight on 60 Minutes, only CBS. Mm. Bill Dawson's now made 26 straight field goals from inside the 40. In a game here, we have not had a punt so far. Deep kick forces the touchback. Now, Krebs. And a limp to the locker room. 13-10 Cleveland. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Best Buy. Get the best tech gifts this holiday from Best Buy. And by Allstate. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. Browns report to us from the locker room. Foot injury to Cribs. Questionable to return. Jets will start this next drive at the 20, Phil. Down 13-10. There's two drives starting on the Cleveland side. The one from their own 24 led to the touchdown to Cotteri. Tomlinson, the running back. And LT. And these running backs, they never forget, do they, when they were taken, particularly the ones that are they're pretty high in the draft. LT was the fifth pick back in 2001, but the Browns passed over him. They took Gerard Warren with the third pick. So, alas, he's had a lot of very big games against Cleveland, and he admitted to us this week he's always had a little edge because of that. Of course. You know, you, you were slighted. I understood a lot of players do that. They wanted to be drafted higher. But Damian said it's great to come and play in the house of Jim Brown. Yeah. Nobody knows the history. And he has another carry here out to the 29. Well, last year he passed Jim Brown to eighth all time. 
on the rush list right here at Jim Brown's house. And Brown was here to see it. He saluted him after he moved past him to number eight on this field last December as a member, of course, of the Chargers. And LaDainian really just reborn this year. You know, all Jet fans have heard it many times. It just goes back, just like you said, getting his legs back, getting powerful, doing different lifting, and it shows in his play with the Jets. Rededicating himself to the weight room, he said. Once had a 200-yard rushing game on this field back in 03. A third straight carry, and he has stacked up. Now let's see if they give him the spot. Yeah, let's spot. It, it, it just, you know, it's, that's good for the first. There's no better system, but they run all the way across the field to try to put their foot down in one little spot. But it looks like he stopped initially. Yeah, that's a pretty good spot, right on the edge of that line. Pretty good job. Thank you. Plus, at the end, he falls. That's that definitely got him passed. That got him passed. By the way, he's moved up since moving past Brown on this field. In December, he's now moved past Tony Dorsett to number seven, and he's closing in on number six. It belongs to Eric Dickerson. Sanchez over the head of Kelly. There is a flag in the secondary. Prior to the pass, illegal contact, defense number 99. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. But I told you what Scott Fujita on Dustin Keller, they want to be aggressive off the line of scrimmage. Here he comes up the field. Plus your Zine Boy just goes past the five yards, about eight yards, pushes him in the back. That's enough to throw him off balance. We've got Brad Smith back in there, ready to take the snap. Sanchez wide to the right. They got two defenders on three receivers. They're expecting run. That's what it is with Smith straight ahead for about four. That's why I keep waiting for Brad Smith to throw the football. Cleveland is playing run all the way. Look what happens to the ball. Three receivers, two defenders. They know they're running. And then everybody's in a three-point stance like they're getting ready to run a race. That's yeah. another giveaway that they're not going to get a pass thrown their way. Did you like Sanchez in that foot race? If that was the case. <laughs> he was ready to go. Back under center. He's Oops. fast for quarterback. But... Second and six. Down the field. That's going to produce a flag, no doubt. Santonio Holmes. Eric Wright's going to be the one that called for pass interference. The change of pace by Santonio Pass Holmes. interference. Defense number 21. Automatic first down. I think Santonio Holmes actually misjudges the football and it results in getting this flag thrown. Watch as he sees the football thrown. Oh, you see the little hesitation? He stops. If he doesn't make that stop and keeps going and stands up, he might catch it because that was an excellent throw by Mark Sanchez. Yeah, it was that little stutter move that got Eric Wright concerned enough to put a hand on him, and it's a 27-yard penalty. Vegeta is shaken up. They are trying to get the football to Dustin Keller. The Browns are all over him when he comes up the field. Man. Sanchez get Man. crushed. Schaefer. Mark Sanchez. Vegeta comes off the field. He can, I, I think he's just getting a little more dynamic as time goes along. And I love the way they're using him on the uh, at quarterback, of course, in this offense. They run it, but when they're throwing it, they are going for the shots. Looking for big plays almost every time he drops back. First down snap from the 34. Green. With a little wiggle and down to the 25. Of course, Sanchez has the history with the Cleveland Browns because they had that fifth pick in the draft. Back in the spring of 09, and the Jets called him up and said, hey, we need to move up from 17 to 5. That's what they did. So they gave up in all a first, a second, and three players, all of whom are on the Browns roster. Two-minute warning. Coming up, the sprint halftime report.
James Brown will take you around the league. With commentary, of course, from Dan Shannon, Boomer Coach Coward. All coming up, Sprint Halftime Report. Second and a short yard for the Jets at the two-minute mark. They were awfully good last week at the end of the first half and into the fourth quarter. They got Braylon Edwards. That's Green getting outside, getting the edge, and getting the first down. I thought they might check that time. Braylon Edwards was covered by Ward to safety, and they were kind of by themselves. But it's not a bad um, choice to give it to Sean Green, too. Again, the Jets running so many plays on the Cleveland side of the field. 18 of 26 snaps so far on the Browns into the field. First down from the 22, and it's Green. Nice little move to pick up about four. Coleman on the tackle. Gain of five. Jets have all three timeouts. Yeah, the fact that, you, you know, Jim, you play it both ways here. It's great that you can run the football, but now you're going to you want to score, of course. But the other, the other point is, just don't give it back to the Cleveland Browns. Second and five. Great protection. That's Green taking it down to the five and a first and goal to go. Yeah, excellent job. I'm not sure if Mark Sanchez is not going to throw it to Green the whole time. He just looked it off, let the defense expand, and then when he turns and throws it, he's wide open. Green's made some nice plays on this drive. He's replaced right here by Tomlinson. First and goal from the five. It's LT. LT down to the one. Looks like he might be jammed at the line of scrimmage for a moment. Timeout by the Jets with 35 seconds to go in the half. A yard away from the end zone and the lead. Let's watch LaDainian Thompson. Watch his feet. Look at the contact the offensive linemen have. They are on their guys, and the Brown defenders can't get off. And when you watch LaDainian Thompson this year, if there's five yards to be made in a play, he gets it every time. His choices of where to run the football have been extraordinary. A lot of shifting around. LT wide to the right on second and goal. Rolling out Sanchez in trouble. Throws it away over Tomlinson's head. David Bowens and Eric Barton were chasing after Sanchez. I'm not sure who they were trying to throw it to. All the shifting, trying to get the defense to make a mistake. And I think they were trying to throw it to Dustin Keller, who either fell down or got knocked down right away. Look at 81. Oh, he just yeah. gets knocked down. Being physical again with him. Stop the touchdown. Another timeout called here by the Jets. Another chance to remind you that coming up, the Sprint Halftime Report with J.B. Dan, Shannon Boomer, Coach Tower. Take you around the league. You know all the highlights of the early games, including Tennessee and Miami. They're tied approaching the two-minute mark. Houston and Jacksonville tangling, and the Colts got off to that 17-0 lead. The Bengals have fought back to 17-10. I always thought this situation, very tough call. Of course, you can run the football, but down in the goal line, sometimes hard to get those two yards. What play do you have ready in your game plan for this situation? Now there's Brian Schottenheimer, his dad, of course, the coach here in Cleveland back in the 80s. And if you run it, you run it because you're thinking of, well, if it gets inside the one, we'll go for it on fourth down. Looking right into the dog pound. And now a timeout called by the Browns. It's like an NBA game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight on CBS, the kingpin of Lucky Strike Bowling goes undercover. You can't miss an all-new undercover boss. Only yeah. on CBS. Look, you know, you don't... 
You got your big bowling tournament coming up in about a week, huh? Yeah, that's right. A lot of pressure on you. You talk every year how you're going to win it, but you got a big old one going over. Got guys like Bob Wishney on this crew. It's kind of hard to beat, but you know, I just go out and put my 200 on the board and see how it holds up. Okay? <laughs> He's such a humble man. <laughs> man of the people. I think Monica Mendoza, this is the year for her. She's been trying to win it. She gets tight. Let's see what happens here. Third and goal. Green in the backfield, spreading it out. The Jets. Sanchez looked right, now runs, and he's in. Touchdown. Mark Sanchez and the Jets take the lead with 23 seconds to go in the half. I don't think that was planned. It's just he looked at the fade that Braylon Edwards didn't like it and took off. Oh, look at that. Chris Gokong in the middle reacted to Sanchez's eyes. Well, Sanchez has had a couple really big plays just all on him. What a, a very good first half by Mark Sanchez. Seventeen thirteen jet lead. His well, fifth career rush touchdown two weeks in a row now. Look at he wants to throw that fade says nope. Pulls it down. The Cleveland Brown corners are being very aggressive. They're winning the physical battle outside a lot of times against the Jet receivers. But I think both of these teams, yeah, Rex Ryan, very excited. Of course, it's an emotional game for him for, for many, many reasons. But it even makes more with Eric Mangine and his brother on the other side. But both teams need to go in at halftime and say, we got to keep the quarterbacks more in the pocket. Mark Sanchez moved Colt McCoy especially the Jets they talked about well we're going to keep in the pocket we got spies I haven't seen anything whatever they're doing it's not working but she came into this game knowing that McCoy on the outside with the likes of Robisky and Stuckey and Massaqua it's not like when you're matching those receivers up against Revis and Cromartie there's a whole lot you can do out there with that well, just split them out and say okay they're gone you know, yeah. don't worry about it get them as far to the edge as you can I think it's interesting. The Jets, they blitz Tom Brady, Brett Favre, and Rodgers. They can't even get close to the rookie quarterback. Joe Hayden is back deep with Cripps. Out with the foot injury. And here is Hayden. Hayden with a good piece of running. There's a flag that's going to bring this big gainer back. And that's one that might have cost him three. They could have been a fling or two away from a possible Dawson, Dawson distance. Downwind too. During return, holding, receiving team number 93. 10-yard penalty, first down. Would have been a 37-yard return for Hayden. Right to your right of your screen. Another Trusnick. former Jet, Jason Trusnick. Yeah, he's got his arm outside. And now if you're the Cleveland Browns, take a knee. Just take a knee, 17 seconds. Trusnick came over to Cleveland in the Braylon Edwards trade. He was a Mangini farm free agent out of Ohio Northern. Told him he was with the Jets. Come here, I'll give you a chance. Give you a chance. You work hard, you can make the roster. Ends up following Mangini over here to Cleveland. We had nine total drives in the half by the teams. No punts. A jet lead of 17-13 behind a Sanchez touchdown throw and touchdown run. New York 17, Cleveland 13. Back with the Sprint Halftime Report after this match. Nance and Phil Sims back here in Cleveland, Ohio, with the Jets leading at 17-13. You see Cripps has come back out for the second half, sitting on the Browns bench. We'll see if he'll return to action with that foot injury. And your thoughts on that first half? There's nothing to complain about. I think the only thing on both sides, both defenses are going to hope to get more pressure on the quarterback. But it's been very well played, a lot of good hitting, and I'm impressed. With both quarterbacks have done very well. All right, Phil, let's take a look at the All-State points of protection. See what you see here. Like, protect your possession. No punts. No punts. Protect your quarterback. No sacks. 
And third down by the Jets. Both of their touchdowns coming on third down plays. The 25 yard pass to Cotri and then Sanchez to keep officially from a yard out. Of course, the Jets won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. So they are going to be getting it here to begin the third quarter with Brad Smith standing at about the four yard line. Brad, who grew up in nearby Youngstown, Ohio. Mike Westoff special team since he came here in 01 to the Jets. 12 kick returns for touchdowns, most in the league. This one's short. An early handle here. As Dwight Lowry to about the 35. Spotlight by you, Phil. What did you see on this touchdown by Sanchez? Well, look at the blocking up front. The fact that it, it was a pass. The Browns defenders rushing, not even thinking about the run once they saw Mark Sanchez drop back and take his eyes to the right. They're doing something with a broken play. A couple of impressive drives directed by Sanchez there in that second quarter. Long drives for touchdowns. Vegeta is not in the game right now. Bowens is. They run it to his side. And it's a quick stack up by Bowens and others. Tomlinson for no gain. Sanchez's numbers. Well, he had nine completions to seven different receivers. Hillis, 10 for 60. And a touchdown. Also caught three balls. Jets who have a perfect 4-0 record on the road this year. In fact, they've won their last seven regular season road games. Got a second and ten here. Fake to Tomlinson. And Sanchez with a flag thrown. Going to have a hold call against the Jets. Negating the five-yard scramble by Sanchez. Holding offense number 60. Ten yard penalty. Second down. Goes against the Brickishaw Ferguson. Might be just because he had to hold his rusher so long. And then Mark Sanchez, when he moves out of the pocket, left tackle, number 60, top of your screen. Boy, good job by the Brickishaw Ferguson. There it is, once Sanchez moved. And Hearing Vegeta is questionable to return because of a knee injury suffered late in that first half. Second down and 20. Open lane and that's Braylon Edwards. Boy, he had all kinds of separation. And the Jets pick up the first down. Hey, Mike, Mark Sanchez is just, he's striping it when he throws the football today. They got a safe defense on. It should stop this, but Braylon Edwards You've got to honor his speed on the outside. And when you watch this Jet offense, the difference between them and the Browns, the Jets are trying to make the big plays in the air. In other words, the ball's traveling far down the field. The Cleveland Browns are throwing it short, trying to catch and run with it. Three catches, 49 yards for Braylon Edwards. Anytime the football's anywhere near him, they greet him with a chorus of boos, and that's under center with Smith. Wildcat doesn't produce a whole lot this time. Tomlinson, a rush of three. I don't know this answer. I'm just saying we are going to have a big key breaker with Brad Smith in there today. They, they, they got to give us a new wrinkle. He's going to fake it, throw it. This is all part of the deception. Is that what you see? Oh, absolutely. And it, when you have pa when you have packages like that, Jim, where you have specialty players come in and you, you've got a group of plays, every week they kind of add one to it. Hey, here's something we haven't shown you. Not that you're going to run it, but it's there and ready. And I believe the Jets have one ready. Second and six, we'll call it. Sanchez. Oh, he got hit when he threw it. Ball wobbles through the air. And falls without an issue at the 29. That was Matt Roth. Got a hand in there as Sanchez was ready to uncork a long one. Well, you said it again. Trying to go deep down the field, number 53, Matt Roth. The, 
The coverage was so good, he got up off the ground to get it done. They had Braylon Edwards really deep, but it just took so long that Matt Roth had a chance to get that fumble. All right, here you go, Phil. Back to Brad Smith in the Wildcat on third down. It's a running play up the middle, and it's good for the first. Sean Green to the Cleveland 40. Gain of 10. That, is, that was a nice changeup. I've seen him do it before, but on third and five, you just don't expect that. You, it catches your defense by surprise. You're in there ready to stop the pass. Look at the area to run in on the inside. I mean, Nick Mangold, he's running down there, can't even find a guy to block. First down from the 40. About that move. Yeah, Tomlinson. Picks up six, maybe seven. I tell you, as the year goes along, I, I think he's getting better. Yeah. You, you kind of expect him to maybe tire out. Slauson, oh. Ferguson just gets thrown to the ground, but it doesn't matter. But Danian Tomlinson, whoo, he makes a miss completely. Running low. Running hard. Back to basics, he told us. Rededicating himself to a lot of lower body workouts. Looking strong. Second down and three. Thompson again. He's got short of the first. Got a yard short. Well, you know, when you talk about football, Jim, it really is always the basics. You know, we talk about all oh, this scheme, look at this play and all that. And I'll never forget one time I heard Mike Ditka say, you know, no matter what, sooner or later you got to punch the other guy in the face. <laughs> it's, <laughs> and it's so true. And we got two teams that believe in that philosophy and they do it well. And it simplifies everything. You can't be all fancy on defense because you're too worried about getting run over. Third and a long yard. And Green is the tailback. Green's got the first. Picks up three. Jets Tony. with touchdown drives, Phil, the last two possessions. And uh, they started in their own territory, and they did just what they're doing right here. Kept well, it, it for a long time and led to the end zone. It just shows you Rob Ryan over there looking. Last week, the Cleveland Browns basically were standing up on defense, walking around, because they were not worried about the New England Patriots pounding the football at them. But you don't see them walking around trying to be clever this week. They're getting down in the stance to get ready, because here it comes again. Down the sideline and with a shove by Tomlinson on the defender, Joe Hayden, who looked like he might have a play on the pick. But Tomlinson didn't touch him until the ball had already grazed the fingertips of Hayden. Mm. Little late blitz by the Browns. Again, Sanchez doing an excellent job. When in trouble, he is getting rid of the football. Second and ten from the 30. Going back for the same play. It's Edwards. And it's over his head. Airtight coverage by Hayden. <laughs> uh, it's, it's tremendous coverage down the field. I wish we had one of those uh, clickers on the football. Because Mark Sanchez, they are, the Jets are airing it out. And Braylon Edwards probably would have been better served to go to the inside, and Sanchez could have rifled it in there. You just know how much Edwards wants six today. And how much this group right here, these fans. Got to hustle up, play clock. Don't want any part of that. Third and ten, Jets have been great on third down today. Seven and nine. Including some long conversions. And this one's going to be spotted about a yard short of the first. Hayden rides him down after a gain of nine. Boy, again, protection for Mark Sanchez does an excellent job. It's a three man rush. He doesn't feel the pressure, so he waits. And it gets him close to the first down. Well, they're going to go for it here, Phil. Fourth and a yard. Green is the tailback. Green over the top. 
He got it. He has the first down. Mm. Man, I tell you. My ball, my ball. If I was going to jump, I definitely would have had number 21 do it. That's one of his specialties. But a good job. Nick Mangold, the center. Wow, what a collision inside by all of them. Yeah, right away, you can see, my judge, he's got it. One of the reasons why he didn't get up, he was grabbed as he was trying to jump in the air. Smith, the quarterback, first down. Smith again, keeps it up the middle. Down to the 13, we're seeing a lot of this, Phil. Yeah, we are. I think it was going to be the other way around. I think the Jets thought that they were going to see more of this when Cleveland had the ball from Cribs. Of course, Cribs went out with an injury there mid-second quarter. They had had the football for half the quarter. Really, those last five minutes of the first half, the only play that Cleveland ran was virtual kneel down second down Holmes over his head yeah he had him they've been going down the field down the field outside throws and all of a sudden this time Santonio Holmes comes to the inside but the football gets away just a little bit from Mark Sanchez that's why it's high into the inside another third down situation Third, and it's closer to four. Steps up, waits, waits, takes off, no. Straddles the line, flings it to Green, who's bounced back, and that still produces a first down, another third down conversion by New York. Gain of eight. Got to keep the quarterback in the pocket. Pressure it, get back so you're getting around his feet and in his face. Look, nobody open. He's going to run it, and then he decides, ball's in his left hand, I'm not going to make it. So he reloads, and what a throw on the run to Sean Green. Grant Smith to the right, contrary to the left. Cover will shift over to that right side on first and goal to go. That's a penalty. Penalty, you got to get start. Offense number 68. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, not only that, they never got set. They did a little shift. And even if the, the Brickishaw Ferguson didn't have a false start, it was still going to be called. And, you know, you go back to that to, to a couple plays earlier, Jim. On fourth down, the Jets doing so much and dominating the line of scrimmage so well, they didn't hesitate when it was third, I mean fourth, and a little less than one yard. Here's to go now from outside the 11. Green, and a slice through there. Bounces back and loses yardage. And it's a loss of two. How about the length of this drive, time-wise? Yeah, it's incredible. And it's just, it's been everything. The throws and just overcoming the holding penalty because of the terrific throw by Sanchez outside to Braylon Edwards. But picking up the third downs, then going for it on fourth down and getting it. Edwards will go wide to the left. Eric right on him. Expecting blitz, two guys in the backfield. Now you see the Browns standing up, trying to confuse the Jets blocking. Second and goal from about the 15. There's the pass at the seven, down to the six. Holmes. Elam drops him there. Three-man rush all day. Big throwing lane for Mark Sanchez. Let me just state this. I've said it many times to you. I hate the three-man rush. Because when you're playing a veteran quarterback, they sense it right away, know it. They're willing to hold the ball longer. And defenses always break down when you if you make them stand over there long enough. They will find the throwing lanes. Third and goal, New York at the six. They were hoping to get a pick. Sanchez batted down by Ward incomplete. 
trying to hit Keller in the end zone. After all that, over 10 minutes, the Jets will try to produce three. Well, they probably knew they were in trouble right away. Keller coming out there, going back underneath. He went back and forth behind the line of scrimmage. Nobody was really following him. They were trying to create, you know, some traffic so he could get open. It did not work. Good job by the Browns. Tanner Purdom, the Jets' first long snapper since James Durth had the role from 01 all the way to this year, will send it back to Weatherford. It's just 24 yards. Okay. And the kick. with the football and the Jets unable to put anything on the board well Falk hits the upright and it looked like it might have been able to somehow still the stick tip, through the tip of the football the nose hit the upright that's what drove it back into the inside instead of letting it skip through that was a 19 play drive which ties the longest by plays in the lead this year and again it does not lead to anything well let's watch it watch how as he kicks the football he kind of falls back and he's up and the nose of that football hits the inside it doesn't skip through it comes back but you know always look at kickers of course I never kicked in my life but it's so much of it reminds me of golf if you don't get through it it's gonna go to the right and that time that's what happened and what an emotional lift for the Cleveland Browns to be physically dominated and give up nothing. After a Hillis carry of two, it's a second and eight, and a fake to Hillis. Pass to him, almost pulls it in one-handed, still would not have gained any yardage. The new NFL.com mobile apps are here, and no matter where you are, you can stay in the game all season long. Go to NFL.com slash mobile to learn more. Nick Falk changing shoes. He's changing the uh, plant foot. McCoy now. And a third and eight. Let's look by the Jets. Real time, he has not completed a pass in 57 minutes. They're coming after him. Given chase, no one there. Not a brown in sight, three and out for Cleveland. This will be our first punt of the day for either side. I, I know he gets outside, but it's still different this time for the Jets. They have the five people inside. You can see the edges. So when he breaks out, there's nowhere to throw him to go. David Harris, they've got the edge, so he has to throw it away. Reggie Hodges comes in. He was formerly, of course, the Jets punter. Back in 08 for Mangini in New York. He's replaced by Weatherford. Just a final rest today. Hodges earns a full catch by Leonard. 39-yard punt, and the Jets will take over at the 39, up 17, 13. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Walmart. Save money, live better. Walmart. And by the new 2011 Ford F-150. Built Ford Tough. Again, that 19-play drive by the Jets, matching the longest in the league this year. And then Brown's defense, not much of a rest. The offense unable to Good stay point. out there for only three plays. Let's see if it shows. Back to Tomlinson. All the way down to Sanchez. He was looking for Edwards. And he steps out of bounds at the 42. It took so long that Santonio Holmes was definitely by his guy on the outside. But Mark Sanchez would probably have to throw it about 80 yards. See Santonio Holmes, top of your screen. He was flying. But Sanchez, I think that was a very good job of pulling it down. Watch Edwards for a moment, too. He was open. Well, that was the initial read to try to throw it right down the middle of the field to him. Ends up being a three-yard gain on the Sanchez run. Second in on seven. Yeah. 
End of round. Smith. A good gainer for the Cleveland side at the 42. Well, you know what they're doing. They got the team tired, so now they did a flea flicker or yeah. a trick play and a reverse. Back-to-back -back plays. That good. does tell you they're trying to take advantage of that. Good strategy. Saturday, the Home Depot SEC on CBS rolls with the Rebels of Ole Miss battling the Bayou Bengals of LSU. It all begins with the TIAA Crest College football today. That's next Saturday here on CBS. First down, Jets, Cleveland 42-yard line. In the round to Smith, was good for 16. LT spins for about two. That last drive included a fourth down conversion, but down near the goal line, they had to try the 24-yarder, both hit the right upright. Yeah, long drive, a lot of plays, picking up third down, picking up fourth. And nothing. A lot of good numbers, but no points. Second miss of the day for Falk, and missed from 48 in the first quarter. It's a second down and eight. 32 of the last 36 plays been run by the Jets. Sanchez avoids the sack and tried to throw that over to Dustin Keller. And that was Bowens honing in on the quarterback. Yeah, doing a good job. Mark Sanchez has been terrific getting away from pressure today. And the fact that his style of throwing will every once in a while make him overthrow because he really stretches out. His front foot gets out in front of him. So it makes him get under just a little bit. That's why it goes high every once in a while. Holmes to the right. Edwards to the left on third and eight. Sanchez, not this time. He's not going to escape the pressure. Getting to him was Mike Adams. Mike Adams, number 20, has been on Dustin Keller a lot today. Coming from the outside, they don't have the numbers. The offensive line misses it. Weatherford's first punt of the day. It's going to be coming down to Stuckey. Got a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Fair catch by Stuckey, who has to be called in to return the punts with Cribs out. Offense, 12 men on the field. Five-yard penalty will be assessed from the end of the play. First down, timeout. The football to the 19. Sanchez getting a little attention on the sideline. Look at his leg here. Mm. Right leg buckled a bit. We'll be right back to Cleveland. The Jets are examining that right knee of Mark Sanchez laying down behind the bench. Second series of the second half with only a minute 24 to go in the third. To Hillis. Bounces out of bounds for a first down at the 30. That's the Browns' first first down since seven and a half minutes were on the clock in the second quarter. What happened on the Sanchez? Well, bit? watch his right knee. He gets it caught underneath him. Oh, it's hard in his ankle, and then all the pressure went to his knee. And Sean Rogers then fell on it. Mm. Well, he's going to try to walk it off. There's no question about that. You can tell. Well, the Browns move the chains for the first time since the mid great point of the second quarter. Look at the feet out. Stacking up Peyton Hillis. It's the best tackle of the day by a Jet on Hillis. Yeah, you know, when you talk about this Jets defense, Sean Ellis, Sione Bouha, and Mike DeVito, they do, truly do, all the dirty work. And they line it up for the linebackers to make all the plays. That's how the defense has been built. They take on blockers, hard to move them, and knew the biggest reason why it's hard to run the football on this Jets, this Jets defense. When we talked to Rex Ryan this week, we said, what about this game? First thing he said is, we got to slap 
Peyton Hillis around a little bit. He's running rough shot over this league. Yeah, good luck. Got another chance on him right here. And they do hold on to him. To about the 28, helmet comes off. And that'll close out the third quarter. Boy, it moved quickly with that one drive by the Jets. No points produced on either side. Going to the fourth, New York leads it. Mark Brunel is warming up. Yeah, I saw Matt Cavanaugh, the quarterback coach, just walk over and talk to him. So this might be getting a little more serious. And just uh, trying to read the body language. Of course, that's what we're doing, trying to read the body language of Mark Sanchez and all the people around him. Will he be able to come back? A third and long to start the final quarter. Jim Nance and Phil Sims here at Cleveland Brown Stadium. Need to get to the 40 for the first. They're coming after McCoy. They got him. That's E. Hetty Bow on the sack. Well, when I talked to Cole McCoy, and we did, Jim, on Friday, he said his first look at this Jets defense, he goes, are you kidding me? Because he just couldn't believe what he was seeing. Because they do so yeah. much stuff, and you can't sometimes figure out where the blitz is coming from. That time, the Jets had pressure from both outside guys. And it was tough for Cleveland to pick up. Said I popped the cassette in there. I looked at it and said, are you kidding me? They're coming from everywhere. But their running game and their offense has slowed them down so far today. Hill Hodges with the punt. And it's a good one. Could be Kyle Wilson, the rookie on the return. Up the middle on he tripped. At the 46. Guess what? Mark Sanchez has the helmet on. NFL on CBS is sponsored by E-Trade. And by Verizon, the official wireless service provider of the NFL. So Sanchez is in. He's under center at the 46. The green is running back. just to get the hand off. He signaled over the sideline. Yeah, I think he'll get in the flow. He'll, he has, you have to get out there, Jim, and figure out what you can do. So it's a little feeling out process for him as he's trying to work with his knee. That was a struggle just to get the hand off. Well, you got to protect yourself a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty rough stuff. Thought it was Billy Kilmer for a moment. Well, that's a good, really good call by Brian Schottenheimer. Bring in Brad Smith. Brad Smith now comes in. See if it's quarterback draw again. It's green. Only to the 49. You wonder about Sanchez. Now you got a passing down coming up. Can he drop back? Is he going to be able to plant and throw? Well, the big thing is, the good thing for him is it will be in the shotgun. So that's going to help. But to throw it, you got to power it off that right leg, you think? No, no question. The power, the, the force when you're a right-handed thrower inside of your right knee, the inside of your right foot. Need to get to the Cleveland, 44 for a first. Here they come. Escapes the hit. Side steps, now in trouble. He's going to duck as he should. Well, that was a good job. If he's healthy, that could have been a big play. LaDainian Thomason picks up the blitz, short side. Here comes Eric Wright. Look at the last second. Boy, that is terrific. Now he can reset and throw it down the football field, but he knows his physical well-being can't get it done. Weatherford back out with Stucky the returner. Weatherford has earned more fair catches than any punter in the league this year. Bounces out of bounds inside the 20. No scoring here in the second half. 17-13, Jets lead it in the fourth. Jim Nance and Phil Sims back here in Cleveland. Been a long time since we've seen this Browns offense do much of anything since that pass to Cribs in the second. It went for 37 yards. Cribs injured on the play and has not returned. to Hillis, and again, they've got McCoy yeah, for the sack. 
That's Calvin Pace. One of the things I hate, I don't hate, that's a strong word, but you get tired of hearing, oh, a halftime adjustments by the coaches. Well, you know what, sometimes it is true. The Jets, look what they're doing. They're just engulfing the pocket, Jim. They're surrounding so we can't escape. And their coverage down the field is exceptional. And now there's nowhere for Colt McCoy to run. Second sack of the game by the Jets. Cleveland in this half has not gotten past its own 30. Well, look at I, well I will say this, too. Well, I'll just say this. The, the Cleveland Browns kind of going on what Mark Sanchez said to you about being a quarterback. Live to play another play. Yeah. And that's what they're doing in the game. They're not taking chances on the defensive side. They're being smart on offense, and they're waiting. Just keep waiting that somebody can make that one play that can win the game for them. And their defense has been resilient in this half. Absolutely. Offense has been non-existent. It's a third and six. Two catches all day long by Cleveland wide receivers. Here they go again, surrounding the offensive line. Third and six. An open man. It's Stucky, and he's brought down. Good tackle. That was Kyle Wilson preventing the first down, a yard short. Yeah, Kyle Wilson back in the lineup, almost got in trouble, got picked as they moved the receivers around. But look at the recovery by him. Fights his way through and then makes the tackle. That's what it's all about. When you're a blitzing team, if the guy catches it, be close enough to take him to the ground immediately. Wilson had an 18-yard punt return the last time off a 50-yard Hodges boot. That Leonard also has a return. So 10 yards ahead of us. And bounces out at the 38. 40-yard punt. Sanchez going to stay in there. This board is on the sideline of the Jets. Start fast, set edges, knock them back, trick plays, sack quarterback, which they've done twice in the half. Win, win, win. You know, we had no punts in that first half. Five in the second half. And Sanchez drops back and hits Richardson. He's got first down yardage to the Cleveland 49. And by the way, next week on CBS, we bring you one of the most anticipated games of the year, the Colts and the Patriots. They renew that rivalry from Foxborough. We'll have it for you next Sunday on CBS. That was a nice key breaker by the Jets. Browns playing the run. Send the extra guy up there to stop it. That's why Richardson was wide open. Thompson gets the call this time. Scored to about three. Now the New York Jets, we talk about their team. Listen, they're built to take a situation like this and win the game. That's what they built their team to do. We can stop them on defense. Let's get a lead. Let's run it and end it. So here's the perfect scenario for them. Rob Ryan's defense not giving up anything in this half as far as points. And that, that unit has been out there most of the way since halftime. They play a lot of guys. That helps, Jim. But they have lost two guys today, too. All kinds of time, stepping away, backpedaling, signaling, and finding Tomlinson. Brought down by Bowens at the 41. Again, they're without Vegeta, one of the big playmakers on defense, and Sheldon Brown, both out with injury. The coverage down the field is terrific. Braylon, Santonio Holmes covered on the outside. Dustin Keller was covered over the middle. Here's Braylon Edwards on the other side. Nope, not going to throw that across the field. But what a job by Sanchez. Third and two. They go with Green off left tackle. And the forward progress will be enough for the first. Well, you got a good offensive line. They're tough. They're very good running the football. You get a big running back. Hard to stop them. They've done a, really a very good job today of making the contact, and the Brown defenders cannot get off the blocks fast enough. Wow. Green. That time, Robert Turner, Sean Rogers couldn't get away from him, Jim. 
Green with 14 carries, Tomlinson with 13. First down from the 39, Bates to Green. Pass, he's hit when he throws it. That was Go Kong on the quarterback. Again, going down the field, they got the receiver open. But Chris Gokong is able to get in there and knock it out of his hand before he can throw it. You know, the Jets are telling us it's a calf injury for Sanchez. We're going to have Brad Smith at quarterback. He's been waiting after a three quarters of deception <laughs> for them to do something off of this. Let's see. Second down and 10. They run the option. There's a flag. Several. It's coming back. And Smith's big run down to the 13 will be wiped off the board. Offense number 17. 10 yard penalty. Second down. And the crowd will react with delight because it's against Braylon. Hey, Brad Smith, what a day he's having with the football in his hand. The quarterback draws the give and go. Now just a speed option. 17, Braylon Edwards. There it is from behind. Oh boy, that's I didn't see it the first time. That is easy. Stone hands this city with Braylon returning today, getting a little warm-up act before LeBron comes back to suffer the second. Chance today to express how they really feel. Second down screen, and it's to Tomlinson. Blockers in front the 36. I will see you Wednesday night, my friend. You will. I will see you Wednesday on Showtime. JP, Chris, Warren. At least you're smiling here. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a tough guy. You've lost Another. the attitude. Yeah. Inside the NFL Showtime Wednesday I, on CBS. I thought you were talking about on like, Showtime. Oh, you were coming over to my house for dinner. I didn't invite no, you. I'm going to see so. you Tuesday night, though. Oh, for dinner. That's yep. Right. At the Oyster Bar. Our Alzheimer's fundraiser. Thank you very much. Third down for the Jets from the 36. The pass caught, and that's Kotchery at the 27 and a first down. Mm. They put Kotchery in motion, just an excellent job. And what happens, it makes the defensive back, it's Joe Hayden. It, can't square up, cannot get contact, and a perfect throw to the outside by Mark Sanchez. What a job. That calf bothering. Hanging in there, and he felt it out last drive, but he's got a feel for it now. He's moved around, and when the receiver's open, he's right on target. Less than six minutes to go. Been out there so long. The Jets offense, Cleveland's produced only one first down and a half. John Green to the 23. Well, I did notice the Cleveland Browns this, this drive. They have blitzed more probably this drive than they have the whole game. You know, two reasons. One, possessions are limited, but also, hey, come on, Rob Ryan goes, the, the quarterback's hurt, let's get to him. Can Rob Ryan's defense stop him again deep? They're taking the play clock every time deep, too. Yep, all the way now down to five minutes on the game clock. Second down and six. That's a catch by Edwards. Picks up ten and a first. Man, another good job. Good drop, good set. You and I were talking during commercial, Jim. Let's see if he can drive off his right foot Mark Sanchez to make the throw. Here's the answer. Good plant by the right leg and throws it safe. Outside, low, perfect. See the push off you were looking for off the right leg? Shoot. Another perfect spot. Mark Sanchez throwing the ball about as well as I've ever seen him throw it. Edwards out of the game. Smith in motion. It's Tomlinson. 
the 13. Can Cleveland hold them to only a field goal here and keep it a one possession game? Approaching the four minute mark. And a reminder that after the game, the Subway Post Game Show with J.P. Dan, Shannon Boomer, Coach Cower. Recap of the one o'clock games. It's coming up. We'll send it to the studio after this one ends. Cleveland, the Jets are already in field goal range. So I think now what you do on defense, you just do whatever it takes to make sure they don't score. In other words, play safe. Don't gamble blitz and give up an easy touchdown here. Make them earn it. You still have all three timeouts. Second and nine, and it's green. And we'll have a third down play coming up, third and about three. No timeouts have been used on either side so far. This is a drive over seven minutes. Ryan Schottenheimer's had some extensive third down package here today, and so many of the plays have worked well. Jets expecting blitz. Looks like they're going to get it. Sanchez from the gun on third and three. Flings it. Intercepted for a moment and then dropped. Oh, that was Abram Elam who made the play in that same territory inside the 10 last week. Last week it was a strip to create a fumble and a recovery. Almost got another takeaway at a crucial moment this time. Oh, that's it, what happens, Abram Elam started to go outside. Mark Sanchez saw it. He determined he was going to throw it inside. But Elam stops and comes back. Now, Brian. Knows that that should have been going back the other way. Instead, Falk, who has missed twice today. This one from 25. And this one good. Weatherford did a good job getting down a little bit of an inside snap. And it's a seven-point lead. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Sony and Sony Internet TV. Television and Internet together at last. McDonald's. I'm loving it. And by Toyota. Well, this drive lasted almost eight minutes. It ends up with a field goal from 25 out. And there's Hayden, the returner with cribs, not returning to this game since suffering a foot injury. Mid second. to the nine to get it. It's away from the first hit. Here goes Hayden. Hayden out of bounds at the 41. I'll tell you what, pretty impressive fill-in right there for Cribs. 32-yard return, ball at the 41. Back here with 2.36 to go. Do the, do the Browns have anything in an offensive playbook they have not shown the Jets yet? They have managed a total of 14 yards total offense in the second half. Kinds of time for McCoy. Ellis moves in on him and the pass incomplete. Massaquo had it near midfield. Next Sunday on CBS, the NFL on CBS, a doubleheader day. Early many will see Houston against the Jets. And again, the blockbuster doubleheader game. Peyton Manning and the Colts, Tom Brady and the Patriots. All beginning next Sunday on CBS with the NFL today at 12 noon Eastern time. A second down and 10 for the shotgun for McCoy. It's the middle, has the completion at the 50. Benjamin Watson. Gonna go a little hurry up here, third and one. Hillis, by the way, on the year is seven for seven on third and ones, but they'll go sneak. The spot's going to be close. Clock comes down to the two-minute mark. All right, two-minute warning. Looks like they'll measure for this one. We'll be right back. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We 
think of this little nugget. Not scored in the last two minutes, fourth quarter, in the last ten games. You got a rookie quarterback back going against a much ballyhooed defense of Rex Ryan. Yep. And you need seven to tie it. The Jets put their speed defense in there. One dead, one defensive lineman. While we were away, they measured. They had picked up the first by the length of a football. Pass was wide of Watson. So tell us about this defense the Jets are going to employ here. Well, I think that's why they did it, because it can be more uh, versatile. They can do more, show some blitzes that, that Cleveland is not ready for. The Jets defense better hustle up. Boy has all three timeouts, 157 on the clock. Steps up, he can run with it. Step throws, and he has another first down with Watson. See, that's what happens on a three-man rush. You know, if, if unless you stand there, you let the quarterback move forward, he's going to find somebody to throw the football to or run. We split Evan Moore wide to the right, back up tight end. Yeah, dangerous in the area of Stuckey. Coming up the Subway Post Game Show, J.B., Dan, Shannon, Boomer, Coach Power. Take you around the league, the recaps of the 1 o'clock game. Give you a little bonus look at some that are running late. This one's a speedy game. This is like your old Giants game. <laughs> Guys, we've done about 3.30, 3.40. Well, that time, Cole McCoy off target because he's been throwing those crossers quick today. But now it's zone, only a three-man rush. Doesn't have to get rid of it so fast. Second. This looks like a different look. Second down from the 39. Drops it down the sideline, and it's over the head of Evan Moore, who once again, the tight end, who they split wide to the right. And it was Revis on the coverage. We haven't had a chance to talk about Revis today. It's been what you thought it might be, like a day where you wouldn't even see him. I believe it's the first time he has seen a pass thrown his way. And if you're going to do it, don't put Evan Moore on him. Now third down coming up. And again, one of the big offensive threats that one of the few that Cleveland has, Joshua Cribbs, has been out since the second quarter. Timeout called by the Jets. Third and ten coming up out of the break. New York leads it by seven. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Kayak.com. Search one and done. I don't know who the Cleveland go-to receiver is. I mean, Watson's his favorite target. But what are you going to do here third and ten with a minute 30 to go? Well, the last time Sean Ellis was the only defensive lineman in the game, they blitzed. So sooner or later, when it comes to the moment of truth, you go to what you are. The Jets are a blitzing defense. They line up Jason Taylor as a down lineman, too. And the three-point stance. Boy, and the feet, fires in, and the ball is caught. What a catch at the 21. In traffic, Benjamin Watson for 17 and a first. He had two Jet defenders draped all over him. Including Eric Smith. Still plenty of time. No use to rush. McCoy. Pass. Come on, Revis. That is Evan Moore, the tight end. Again, they had him lined up wide to the right. Makes the 18-yard reception first and goal to go. Timeout called by the Browns. Well, not a matchup that you would expect would go your way if you're a Cleveland fan. Well. It's strictly this, Jim. It's two tight ends that just overpower the opposition. Little double move down the field. Oh, my gosh, the Jets. Eric Smith in perfect position. Not able to pull it away from Watson. And then Moore gets inside, and just because he's strong, look at it. His hands are up in the air and can pull it down before Revis can strip it away. We're talking about a 6-6 target right here. Evan Moore, his first reception. As he battles Rebus for it, and he wins the battle. First and goal to go with 48 seconds. Well, they're going to play everybody inside. 
So that way they can rush the passer and stop the run just in case. Well, you got Hillis. They give you those tough yards. They're going to go up top. They play it. The ball is caught. Touchdown. Cleveland can tie it with the extra point. Massaqua with the three-yard touchdown grab. All day long, Darrell Rebus, Antonio Cromartie, it's outside. Nobody's challenged them. And the game-winning drive, what do they do? The receivers go in, and they make the catches and tie the game. And right now, the bust, the extra point. Hodges on the hold, Dawson. Through the right side, it's good. 44 seconds to go. 20-20. Massaqua to the outside. Let's see the fake. Oh, that's what it was. That it was it was a little bit of a rub. He has to go underneath Antonio Cromartie since he was playing off, not able to react fast enough and get there. Well designed play. Plus the little fake that Peyton Hillis kept the inside defenders from getting out underneath the quick throw by Colt McCoy. Massaqua's first catch of the game. Leads to a tie at 20, and maybe the Jets, of course, they got plenty of time here and two timeouts to do something to get Falk in range, but maybe they're going to an overtime for the second straight week, tied 2020, prevailing last week at Detroit with the first possession win and a big hookup from Sanchez to Santonio Holmes. Started out, good return. But really, just two excellent throws by Colt McCoy. Three, really, I'm sorry. Three throws in a row, right on target, and good catches. The kick by Dawson. Sends it to Smith a yard deep. He's dangerous. And he's able to get free out to the 30. They had him jammed at about the 15. So a 31-yard return. Joe Hayden on the stop. Hillis down the end zone in the first quarter. Sanchez to Cotri. This one gave him the lead, the run by Sanchez before halftime. Then a 10-minute drive with a field goal bouncing off the upright. And the game tire from McCoy to Massaqua. Two timeouts and 35 seconds. Raymond Edwards wide to the right. Passes wide of Keller. I think Mark Sanchez was off the mark that time. Matt Roth had to throw around the hands of the defender when he did that. Made the throw go too wide. But, but more than anything, Jim, just you got to be super conservative in your decision making as a quarterback here. They go run on the ground with LT to the 35 for five. Not in any apparent hurry here. Yeah, this is the right decision. Just let it go, go into overtime. Why with possession in about 30 seconds would you settle for a coin flip that maybe decide it? Because if they go for it, then they might, if they don't get it, they're worried about the punt, the punt block, a return. So to me, this is the safer way to go, especially with a quarterback that is not 100%. So not only are the Jets going to an overtime tied at 20 for the second straight week, but one of the epic games ever between the Browns and the Jets was an 86 divisional playoff game that went to double overtime, tied at 20. I the remember. same score, remember it? Bernie Kosar threw for almost 500 yards at an NFL postseason record 489. And in the end, one of five double OT games in NFL history, Mark Mosley with a winner from 27 yards out. Third longest game 
in league history 77 minutes and two seconds. I think I remember if I'm, do, I'm just that there was a rough in the pass or a personal foul in that game that turned it around for the Cleveland Browns. Okay, gentlemen, sudden death overtime. Two timeouts each team. First team to score wins. All replays are in the booth. Same coin, helmet is heads, NFL shield is tails. New York is visiting team who's heads. 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 It calls heads. It is heads. You want the ball? What do you want to kick? Defend there. there. Stay where you are. New York won the toss. We'll receive. We'll make the Jets go into the breeze. 15 minute period. No coaches challenges. An overtime coming up from Cleveland Brown Stadium. Heading to overtime, and the Jets will get the football to start it, as they did last week at the Lions. What makes this will make it very disappointing, of course, if you lose, you're disappointed no matter what. But the Jets, with the lead, their defense on the field, that's supposed to be what this team is about, and they let a rookie quarterback go down the field off. Dawson's kick. Again, one yard deep. Smith. They're not going to let go of him this time. Only to the 17. Browns were flying around on the special teams there. Including Blake Costanzo. Young man, you've been watching play for a long time out I of New am. Jersey. Lives right around the corner from me. Ramapo High School. Just tremendous special team player. And just the type of player that Eric Mangini talks about. Just the guys that do everything. They work hard. They know what to do. And it shows the results on the field. Sanchez dropping back. Wide open across the middle. It's Tomlinson. And tackled it back to 28. I don't see Sanchez limping around like he did when he first came back into the game. Oh, yeah, I don't think he's going to limp too much until tomorrow. But one thing, Mark Sanchez dropped back. Look at this little, that little faint he gives. And it really works well because defenders react to it, and that gave LaDainian Thomas an extra yard or two to make a move and get three or four more yards. Tomlinson, the middle to the 33. That was a really big first down the Jets got. You talked about it. What breeze there is is into their face. They didn't even get it to the 20 on the return. So a bad punt. The weather's getting cold. A little, you could, that could happen. So getting that first down now eases the tension. And even if you don't, even if you have to punt, at least you change field position. Second and six. Thompson looked outside. He got wrapped up. Good piece of tackling by Eric Barton, another former Jet. So now it'll be third down for New York. Eric Barton, number 50, reads it, diagnoses it. Look how fast he gets outside. The play really wasn't meant to go out there. So once he takes it outside, there's no blockers. Time for Sanchez. Now to give chase. The pass incomplete. Matt Roth and others were coming after him, and David Bowens of the Browns is the latest Cleveland player to be injured. Coverage once again, which was the weak point of this defense early in the year. They double team Keller, so there's nowhere to go underneath. Bowens has been going the whole second half since Scott Vegeta was injured with a knee right before halftime. Bowens also a former Jet. Had that monster game down in New Orleans a couple of weeks ago with a couple of picks and runbacks. And suddenly it bursts into a sprint, but the Browns are going to be getting the football from Weatherford. As you said, Phil, into the breeze. 
But what he did last time, remember Weatherford kicked it low, a line drive to get under the win and towards the sideline. Stucky the returner. Trying the same. There's that punt that could happen. Right in the middle of the field, though, and Stucky scoops it up. It'll be a good starting position for the Browns. Downwind at the 37. 37 yard punt, four yard return. Colt McCoy, who we met with him this Friday, he was talking about learning some toughness from his grandfather down in Abilene, Texas. He calls his grandfather Daddy Burl. Burl McCoy, who was on a tractor last week on his farm, and all of a sudden the back wheel hit a bale of a hay and flipped the tractor over. It ran over the back of his neck and shoulders. He's 78 years old. <laughs> Fractured sternum, all kinds of broken bones. He got on his feet, chased after the tractor, shut it off, passed out. He's watching this game back in Abilene today from the rehab center. Root on his grandson. He gives the football to Hillis to the 40 for four yards. Hey, if a 78-year-old grandfather can chase down a track, quite a story, really. Quite a story. Just what do you say? Don't, don't worry about me. I'm fine. Let's don't worry. <laughs> All right. Of course, he's watching the game today, so we hope his recovery is going well. The Jets' defense, there's no sitting back. Now you really have to go after it. You've got to be aggressive in your coverage, and I think you've got to go after the rookie quarterback. Second and six. You seal it for him. Hands to Stucky. Oh, good spin move. And he's there first. He was able to spin around Brian Thomas. Well, see what happens. The blitz came. Signal is first down. Colt McCoy gets the extra tackle. So you're talking about Brian Thomas, a big outside linebacker, trying to stop a wide receiver in space. And this is what happens. Oh, tried to push him out of bounds instead of tackling. If he'd have got his arms out, Stucky would have been about, would have been about three yards short of a first down. Got a booth review, I believe. All oh, to see if he stepped out of bounds. Maybe the spot of the football. Hmm. Stucky with that catch. He was the recipient, if you remember, we were there of Chancey. Chancey Stucky caught Sanchez's first ever touchdown throw in the NFL. That's Week right. one last year at Houston. Yeah, they're checking the spot here. Oh, that's I, a, I don't think he has it. Yeah, that's a good, really good job there. I think the yellow line on the field looks like he goes right out on the 45 yard line. So it could be marked back as much as one yard. It looks like a third and one is what they're going to have to come up with. I was trying to squeeze this in a little earlier. Now you're going to have third and one here. McCoy raced to the line on that game tying drive. Had to sneak and picked up the first, but they've had seven situations this year with third and one, and they've given it to Hillis, and he's seven for seven. So that might be the play call if they move this one back. After you, the ball crossed the sideline at the 45-yard line, which is where it'll be placed. It'll be third and one for Cleveland at the 45. Much easier to remark this football for a lot of reasons it is right hand and you have yard markers right there's identified the 45 otherwise that sometimes if that's in the middle of the field they're not going to remark it good job by the guys up in the booth up top for stopping it and reviewing it setting up the third and one well you said it Jim you got Peyton Hillis you'll hate yourself if you don't go with him and you don't get it it's Hillis, and he delivered again. He does. First down, Cleveland. Running behind Eric Steinbach. Picked up two. And now a Jet defender is down. It's Eric Smith. So while he gets some attention, we'll take a little break here in overtime in Cleveland. We're back in overtime in Cleveland. Coming out of the injury timeout, Eric Smith walked off the field for the Jets. Back to the base package with Leonard and Poole, Revis and Cromarty in the secondary.
Eric Mangini trying to defeat the team that fired him. Cole told you this week, Phil, you'd love our locker room. Nobody here cares about our stats. It's all about the team. Just playing to win the game. We don't care about any numbers around here. Yeah, we don't have to feed the egos of stars. Play action, good time for McCoy. His pass incomplete. Leonard came crashing in. There is a flag though on the sideline, the near sideline. Cromarty was tangled up. Leonard was in on Watson. There's no foul for illegal contact. Second down. And that flag was thrown at the 28-yard line, away from where the pass was thrown. That was um, fortunate for the Browns, too. Cole McCoy, I do not think, saw that Leonard was going to drive on that crossing route. And if he put it right on target, I think Leonard was going to intercept the football. Need about another, what, 15 yards, maybe 20 to give Dawson any kind of chance. It's Hillis. Yes. With a 47 in New York. Boy, good call. That, that was something we haven't seen today. The pitch outside. Joe Thomas coming around once again. You've just got to get out of his way. And look how low Antonio Cromarty has to go. Because, well, why else? You wouldn't want to go high and try to take a tackle Peyton Hillis. Kid from Conway, Arkansas. Picks up six. And it's a third and four. And they're going to go shotgun. From the Jets 46. The blitz, the pass, caught by Stuckey, first down, and they're in field goal range. Ball comes out and is recovered by New York. Stuckey made the play to pick up the first. The Browns were in position to win the game, and the ball comes out. He is stripped. I think Drew Coleman may have been the one to strip it out. Now there are people saying that the Jets came in off the sideline. They may have come, they may have been near the sideline and out of bounds on the recovery. Let's a, see. A bunch formation that confuses the Jets. Oh, now maybe Stucky was out right there. I don't think he was. Saying. Nope. There it is. Now do they recover it before they're out of bounds? Nope. They're all in bounds. It looks good from what we can see here. Watch watch the right foot uh, right at the 34. And that's in field of play. That's yeah, it be is. A fumble. I don't know how Rubisky missed the recovery here for the Browns. Number 80. Previous play will be reviewed. Well, the other thing, Antonio Cromartie trying to pick it up and run with it. Wow, if he didn't get that, that was some mistake he would have been tagged with. Wow, Stuckey had... Cleveland set up now mm. to just try to inch it closer for Dawson for the win. Again, Stucky's in bounds. The play call, something new we hadn't seen. Oh, you can definitely see the green outside the foot. He is in bounds, and it's a fumble, a recovery by Cromarty. Again, watch this play out. Watch Robisky go for the Jet player instead of the football. You recovered, you're still in field goal range. Uh -oh. I'll tell you this though, Jim, when that football's on the ground, I tried to recover a lot of fumbles in my career. Unfortunately, a lot of them were mine. It is unbelievable how hard it is to fall on it or to dive towards it and yeah. get it. It's all happening so fast. And Stucky being consoled by his teammates as the Jets defense gets the takeaway at the 36 yard line. And a lot of the audience across the nation joining us now, Phil, and what a game this has been. Jets led it 17-13 at halftime. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, New York. New York had the football for over 10 minutes on the first drive of the third quarter and came away with nothing after a 19-play drive. Nick Falk hit the upright from 24 yards out. But a late drive engineered by Colt McCoy. Touchdown pass to tie it to Muhammad Massaqua, sends it to overtime, and now the Jets have their second possession of the overtime period. In a 2020 overtime for the second straight week. Play action and the pass coming over to Tomlinson. 
was able to hold on and step out of bounds at the 43. Man. And Damian Tomlinson, just a nice catch, and he gets about three more yards out of it than you think he's going to get. Tomlinson talking to us this week about coming here and knowing his role. This is not my team. It was like he kind of compared it to a kid coming out of high school joining a college team. Just trying to find his way around the franchise and right. contribute. Jim, you did it the right way. You work hard, you earn it, and he is definitely earning it, no question. Picked up seven, so it's a second and three. Might have been movement by Keller on the right side. That's number 81. Five yard penalty, second down. Jim Nance and Phil Sims here at Cleveland Brown Stadium. The dog pound is roaring. What a game we've had here today. All these storylines. Mangini against the Jets. The Ryan twins on opposite sidelines. McCoy, a rookie quarterback, directing the Browns down the field to tie it with seconds to go. Second down here for the Jets at the 38. They just got a takeaway as Cleveland was in position to win the game. That's Sean Green, and he is... Hit early by Hayden and then stacked up for a loss of a yard. That blitz has been consistent. Every time the Jets have been on the left hash, the corner to the top of the play is coming on the blitz. Eric Wright is the one made that play. There's Rob Ryan. Boy, his son, he is some kind of coordinator who maybe one day will get his chance to be a head coach. Well, I, I think after what his brother's done in New York, and had success last year and doing well this year, he will get a chance soon. Can his defensive unit make the play here on third and nine? They give Sanchez all kinds of time. Now they're in on him. Somehow he escapes twice. Pass. It looked like it may have hit the ground. They're going to rule it a catch. Jared Kokachri for a first. Boy, that bounced around. Cotteries hurt. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a clean catch. They're gonna they get stripped out way too late. Cotteri, incredible effort there. And how about Sanchez? Escape twice. We have a break in the action. Injury timeout. First down, New York. Well, during that injury timeout with Contrary, they did go back to another booth review on the Contrary catch and wait till you see the effort he makes injured. After he threw, the receiver caught the ball, maintained control throughout the catch to the ground. It is a catch and confirmed as ruled on the field. It was third and eight. He picks up nine and he was hurt before the grab. Watch Going across the field. Look at him. Limping, pulling up, and then somehow plays through it and makes a diving grab to extend the drive. That's amazing. First down for the Jets at the 46. Twice the Browns had Sanchez ready to go down with a sack, and he twisted away. They go Green on the ground. Sean Green, to the 47 of Cleveland, picks up six. Stucky hoping his turnover doesn't lead to a Jet victory. The last play twice, Sanchez gets out of trouble. You think this could be a fumble getting hit from behind and another move to the outside. Good job by Damian Woody staying with his guy. Just a little nudge. Let Mark Sanchez get out there and complete the first down. There was no window there for Patry. He made it. Edwards on a wing to the left. Second down and four. Green, he's got outside. That was a must tackle by Eric Wright. Wasn't a whole lot after that if he got past Wright. A gain of nine, and they're now moving into that field goal territory. Just an excellent run by Sean Green, the Jet lineman. The Brickishaw Ferguson gets stuck to his guy. They can't get away. Bowens can't make the tackle. And you said it, Eric Wright. Go low, get your arms out. Otherwise, the game's over. Really nice cutback by Sean Green. Another first down at the 38 of the Browns. Green into a 
the pile. Maybe a yard. There's a rookie, T.J. Ward, jumping up and mixing it up for a second with Robert Turner, who has been on that line a lot here in the second half. Robert Turner in for Slauson at left guard. Second and ten, we'll call it no game. The run by Green. Sanchez dumps it. Green, pick up of about three. Now, if you might hear third down coming up. From here, it would be about a 53-yard field goal for Falk into the wind. You might remember the 53-yarder had a few years ago on a Monday night game. He was kicking for Dallas up at Buffalo, and he made it to win the game. I think depending on the situation, if the Jets pick up a couple yards, I think they would go for it on fourth down instead of kicking a long field goal. Grass into the wind, I don't like their chances. Timeout called by the Jets. 5-16 left in the overtime at Cleveland. Jim Nance and Bill Sims were coming out of the Jets. Timeout in a third and second on the way. Football at the Cleveland 35. I think the Browns are a little leery of blitzing because of all the matchups, all the speed and skill players the Jets have. So they've been playing it safe in all these situations. Sanchez short jump throw sideline. Caught. Reaching out. Smith does not have the first. He's out of bounds at the 30. So they're going to bring out Fall on fourth down and two for about a 47 48 yarder to win the game. I was going to see maybe that might even be a, a, I hate to say it, a booth review because when he stretched out, it looked like it got inside. They mark it closer the to the 29 yard line. Yep. Weatherford to hold. Two game winning kicks in his career. The one I mentioned at Buffalo when he was a Cowboy and the one last week. This is 47 yards for the victory. Right into the dog pound. The kick. The execution of the snap and hold was very average. And you got a kicker who lacks confidence, but the good thing I thought for Falk that was that it was a long field goal. So you gotta be aggressive when you're kicking it. But watch the snap and the hold. Takes a little while. Maybe a little inside. Yeah, just ne never even close. Third missed field goal of the day for Falk. And all three of them to the right. But not to be a second I do agree with that decision. They picked up so close to the first down that I would have went ahead and tried to kick the field goal too. They take over at the 37 with 4.51 to go in overtime. Hillis. There's a whole brigade of Jets in there to you, stack them up. You know, Jim, to go back, I thought if the Jets picked up one or two yards and if it's five or six yards left to go, I thought, well, they, that, that three or four yards, five yards might be enough. And they go, no, we think we'll go for it. Or you could have put it in the course. You must keep Colt McCoy in the pocket. That's your first concern if you're a pass rusher. It's a second and eight. Steps up. Massaqua ridden down by Coleman. The man who stripped it earlier in this overtime. You saw that reaction too. Chancey Stucky saved by the missed kick. So I've watched this Cleveland offense just really young quarterback. The way they play today, I know a lot of people say, well, that's how you play the Jets defense. It stopped the library blitz and all this. Yeah, it's a good thought. But the problem is, you don't have Peyton Hillis. You don't have this Cleveland offensive line. You can't run it at the Jets like the Cleveland Browns have today. 
to blitz front. On third down, third and three. McCoy goes long to Massacre. And there is a flag down. Yeah, I was told there was a flag, and we don't see it now in second glance. You don't always believe what you hear. <laughs> Well, McCoy, how about the option to go down the field for NASA Quad? Reggie Hodges again. Former Jet. Yeah, that big fake down in New Orleans where he ran it some 60 something yards. Rudy here will hit at the five and bounce sideways. Did that touch the Jets? It may have touched the Jet player. I think it hit the Cleveland guy first. Westerman was down there, and that's exactly what they're saying. They're saying precisely that it was not Westerman first. The ball was illegally touched first by the kicking team. First down at that spot, New York. Jason Trusnick again. But still, it'll be New York football at the nine, Phil. Three minutes, six seconds to go. Cleveland has two timeouts, too, so all the pressure back on this Jets offense. Most teams, when they're backed up, have a set of plays they like to run. A lot of times, it's a play-action fake with the Jets in the shotgun. And you throw it short. Tomlinson. That looked like a little shaky on the handle there. It Marcus was. Bernard brought it into it after four yards. A little hiccup. And Tomlinson held on. Sanchez somehow escapes again. He's got Tomlinson for a big gainer. My goodness, that's a game changer right there. He got away from Sean Rogers. Oh, Sean Rogers has been pushing the pocket so much today. Number 92 just rips right through it. He's basically getting double teamed that time by the center. Robert Turner, the guard. And Nick Mango, the center, they could not hold him out. Instead of about a third and 15, somewhere inside the five, instead, it's a 21-yard gain with 2.33 to go in the overtime. Tomlinson this time bounces off his hands, and Rodgers was barreling in again. Yeah, he was. They had a nice screen set up, blockers in front. They were engaged. That was going to get some nice yards. This is a nice call by Brian Schottenheimer. Everybody coming up the field. This Sean Rogers, you see the blockers in front. Sean Rogers just got there a little too quick again. So Sanchez, Mark Sanchez put a little too much heat on it, and Ladanian Tomlinson could not adjust. Second and ten. This time, he's got all kinds of time. Gets Keller at the 50. All day long, they've been trying to throw it to Dustin Keller over the middle. Finally, he gets single coverage against Patron, and he's able to use his body to catch the football. Picks up 16, Phil. And now you look at it, you're the Cleveland Browns. It's almost to a point they cannot win the game. They're just hoping for a tie because of field position and time. Two-minute warning in the overtime. A couple of big plays by Tomlinson. This one to Keller. Last time for each team came against Kansas City. Jets in 88, Cleveland in 89. This is the fourth game this year in the league that's reached the two-minute mark of overtime. Ooh. Could have our first tie, though, in the league oh, in two years. The same weekend two years ago, Cincinnati, Philadelphia. Everybody's figuring out how to deal with that overtime, Jim Nance. It's been a different story this year. 
They've been going for a while. Not the first position, possession trend that had been going on for about five years. Yep. They're on first down. Good throw. Holmes. Pushed out by Wright. Excellent first down play. You know, let's just go back. This game could have been over if Sean Rogers sacks Mark Sanchez. Sanchez for the, I don't know how many times since he hurt his calf, got yeah. out of trouble. Yeah, with a bad wheel, able to get away from him. One play got out of trouble twice. Yeah, the one to contrary. Second down, and a run, and room, and a flag. And Tomlinson was able to take it down to the 36, but it'll get wiped out. Holding, offense number 65. 10-yard penalty, second down. Mm. Brandon Moore. Brandon Moore, right guard. Against Sean Rogers. Okay. Did you see it? Uh, no. But I'm not down there. You know, I always see that when you're there in person and close, uh, it, it looks different, but I could not see the hold. And don't forget, the umpire now is behind the defenders. So Paul King, the umpire's not behind the offensive lineman. He's in front of him, so maybe he saw more there. Now it's a second and 14. Sanchez passing on an open target. Keller. Third and 14 on the way. Yeah, that was a good idea, but he had to be safe. He couldn't lead him because if he leads him across the field, it could have been trouble. I probably spoke a little too soon with the Cleveland Browns two timeouts. If they make a punt here with the two timeouts, they're going to have time to. Yeah, they will have a shot to win. Yeah, they're they definitely going to get their shot. Two man rush. Oh, come oh he's got it deep. Nope. Going for Edwards. Pass. It. Although I'm going to tell you, it might have been better had they just dropped it. That's Hayden with the pick because that would have forced a punt. What were the odds that Weatherford would have been able to pin him that deep? Hayden makes the pick. Cleveland takes over at the three. Kind of like when the Jets were playing the Denver Broncos. Just a really, I, I tell you, this is a good decision by Mark Sanchez. Throw it up there and see if you can win the jump ball. And th there were. Receivers behind the defense, but he had to throw it so far and so high the defense could react and get back in position. Well, you made the point a couple of times. Jets have one time out. Now, what do you do if you're Cleveland with 135 to go and you're this deep in your own territory? Well, if you throw it, Jim, the big thing is you just want to you want to complete it, of course, in any situation, just so the clock doesn't fight against you. to Hillis over to Watson no he threw it too high for an open Ben Watson I'll tell you what that does that they're trying to win the game I commend them for that but now if they run the football the Jets can call timeout then they run it again they punt it of course of course if they don't get the first down the Jets will have time for a couple plays to get in field, field goal position. Surprise you they threw it on first down? Yes, I am surprised. They have to go run here. It's Hillis diving out to the five, and he'll come to quick check right yeah. out. Yeah, maybe not. We're going to preserve it, Phil. Again, New England and the Jets came in sharing the East lead. New England playing Pittsburgh tonight. I would have called the timeout. I would have forced the Browns. If you call timeout, I believe they would have just, they would have ran the football. And now that you didn't call it, I think it gives them the pass run option. Does that make sense to yes, you? Yes, absolutely. So that's why I would have called the timeout, to force the hand of the Cleveland offense. Colt McCoy is not going to get this. Brown's going to take a timeout of his own. First charge timeout, Cleveland. 
They have one remaining. Well, now it doesn't matter. 41 seconds. They'll come over and talk with some folks behind Genie and the former Jet quarterback coach. 30 second timeout. Coach Dable. He has had that. Listen, Ryan Dable's had a great, he's done well today. They have devised the game plan. They understand Rex Ryan's defense. They picked up the blitzes. They stayed away from the strength of the Jet defense. The corners, who, of course, until the game was on the line, then they made the throws and catches against Cromartie and Rebus. to the 13 for a first. McCoy from the end zone, almost got safety into the equation. Jason Taylor comes in. And, and final charge timeout of the overtime period for New York, 30 seconds. Well, the Jets, perfect scenario. They got what they wanted out of this. All set up because the Cleveland Browns being, I think, of maybe too aggressive, trying to throw it down the field in that first down play to win the game. I think you set up the return. Anytime you have a punter backed up, they're nervous because they know they got to be a little quicker. They're not as far back there as usual. The punt usually goes a little shorter because of that. You've got defenders. Now the Browns are thinking about protection. They should not get down the field as fast. Ryan Pumperion snaps it back to Hodges. Looks like they're going after that. I'd have played return. Oh, yeah. Good hurt. Leonard scoops it back to 45. Got open room. And he is taken down at the 37. Down at the 37 with the tackle by Titus Brown. 53-yard punt. 18-yard return, 24 seconds, and the Jets without a timeout. Well, let's see what the Cleveland Browns do. Do they go three-man rush or four? I think if they go three, I, I think Mark Sanchez will hit the pass and give them a field goal try. Because it has not worked that well. Now they're going with a four-man rush. Nice catch by Santonio Holmes. The defense, Eric Wright stops. The safety misses the tackle. T.J. Ward misses it. Oh, look at Eric Wright. He pulls up because he sees the defender. Barton's coming right at him. He just, like, pulled up as Barton was approaching. Right here, Eric Wright's got a play on it. And then Ward, the rookie, missed the tackle. And Santonio Holmes. Back-to-back -back weeks, making plays in overtime. Absolutely. Well, that was the guy that the Cleveland Browns worried about at the wide receiver position. He is the big playmaker. Oh, yes. What a game by Mark Sanchez. Hard to believe, second year, how well he's played in some of these tough situations, how well he played today in the adversity of his calf hurt, getting out of trouble and making it happen. Uh, Ryan, just a great effort by the Browns in all areas today. What a hard fought battle it was. The Twins going after it. The older brother by five minutes wins it with 16 seconds to go in overtime. 
final score 26 to 20 the New York Jets take it coming up next the subway post game show for Phil Sims and all the crew this is Jim Nance saying so long from Cleveland you've been watching the NFL on CBS we'll join James Brown in New York right after this